Is um, what are some of the things Biden could do? I know I, I feel like I'm the one asking you a whole bunch of questions, but uh, you know, y'all are really hey, tough. Interview, you're, you're interview, we're interviewing each other, so we're not. <laughs> you mean what could Biden be doing by executive order in general? I don't know if he could do anything by executive order, as far as what I've read. What what I what I think he could be doing is making this a front and center thing, where he co he comes in front of like he has unlimited press power. That's what I think Donald Trump oh, yeah. utilized so very well, right? Like he knows that I can get billions of dollars worth of free press anytime. Like he had CNN filming chairs for for what like twenty five minutes or something because they were waiting for him. So he has the power as the world's most famous, I guess, uh, human right now to be able to say, hey, by the way, I want to talk about an issue. Boom, MSNBC, ABC, CNN—they're all going to listen to a proclamation that he makes. So I think he could go in front of cameras and and start really trying to drive home that this is uh you know the state trying to force uh people to give birth against their will something something of that line or to call out people who are being obstructionists within his own party he could do that too but the democrats don't really do that but outside of that is, is there something he can be doing because i know they're going to be trying to uh push through uh the women's health and reproductive act again through the house and the senate it won't make it past the senate of course because uh you won't have the more than 50 votes but um is, is there something else he could be doing I mean, I just think overall it's very clear that this isn't something that he really cares about. In fact, I, I bet you he secretly kind of appreciates all this going on. I don't think he cares. And I and and we when we were talking about judges, um, I recall him sitting on Obama's administration and then actually tolerating their appointment, just sitting there and not getting a hearing. And nobody was standing up that I saw and fighting for Merrick Garland to get a hearing. They weren't doing anything. So, you know, there's a lot of things that he could have done up to this point, but now if he really wanted to fight for this, he is the strongest voice in the country. Like that is the biggest platform in the country. So I think that is the power. And that's what we always talk about, even with Congress people, isn't what they can necessarily do via policy, but what they can do via public opinion and how we can start, you know, building up momentum for that. But when you're just completely like, I mean, they're so impotent and, and you have to wonder, is it by choice? I mean, I think it is. Um, but yeah, they don't do anything. They're, they're mick resistance. They're not even, they don't do anything. And as far as what the president has the authority to do, if he chose to, despite what some people say, he does have the authority to cancel student debt. He does have that authority. He has the authority to decriminalize cannabis and uh, effectively expunge all nonviolent drug offender records. Both which um, would be enormously popular amongst voters, by the way. Yes, like, he, could have, yeah. he could have declared a national emergency and expanded Medicare to everyone. For that COVID. Is, that is, and then they would have to try to take it back, which wouldn't be an easy that thing is to interesting, do. It is a very interesting caveat that is included in the Social Security Act that not a lot of people know about, but, you know, us monkeys. So, so there's a lot of things. And so when you look at his capability, even regarding just health care and what he could be doing for health care, well, that would include women's health. And, that mm -hmm. would include women have because it isn't just a problem even of decriminalizing. Like you said, it's decriminalized in Canada. That doesn't mean people have fair and open access and that here that it's affordable. So if, if this was something that they really cared about, which was women's reproductive freedom, then they absolutely could be doing things for health care for women that would be going in another direction. Like you have to sort of attack from every angle. You know, there's yeah. all different parts where you could be helping and they're doing none of it. And then the most important one of all that he does have the authority to do is to implement the Defense Production Act. And there are multiple ways that you can utilize that if you wanted to. The most important, of course, is we need to move to a clean energy economy, a clean energy grid, if you will. If you were to employ the Defense Production Act, he could probably build out a reasonable clean energy grid within a two year window. It's not that, you know, it's not that trepidatious wow. to think. You know, if we needed endless solar, I mean, listen, we, being in Florida, you know, we have a lot of protected land. There is endless amount of territory that you could have solar fields. And that would be a huge uh, thing for Florida. Uh, I don't want to get sidetracked, but we have yeah. an energy monopoly in the state. Yeah. That's all of the can of worms. Uh, and but, DeSantis just vetoed the bill that we wanted him to veto. And no one wants to hear when he does something decent. But the only reason, Lance, that this got to his desk is because three Democratic senators teamed up with the state Senate uh, GOP to make sure this got to his desk and gave DeSantis an unnecessary political win. And he's going to run with this when he's. Yeah, this was solar. This was a solar bill that 100%. that benefits Floridians and incentivizes solar.
And they got rid of it because the bill was written by Next Era Energy and they don't want that. They don't want net metering. They don't want to have to compensate you if you don't use the energy that they're providing. And so they, they went, wanted to take that away. Three Republicans actually didn't sign on. So then three Democrats said, yeah, we'll support that. And then DeSantis vetoed it, which is a good thing. And yet nobody would give him credit for that. Nobody. They actually went out there, the Democrats, saying that the only reason he vetoed it is because they put so much pressure on him. How about like not voting for it in the first, first place, place to not give him <laughs> any political momentum? Like right. he already has all of the momentum in the world. Why does he need more? So it's <laughs> it's so it, it, again, you you get to the point where you're like, uh, is this deliberate? Because I think it is. And so I think the argument for the progressive movement, and we don't even like calling it that anymore, but the non corporate populist movement that we're you know a part of and that we're fighting for is. Well, I think it's safe to say if a President Sanders was in the White House, that a lot of these things would have been dealt with, yeah. at least in some capacity, as far as I'm concerned, maybe in a big way. Yeah, I, t- I totally agree with you there. I think like there would have been a large section of the progressive movement that would genuinely at this point hate Sanders because of the things that the president would be doing regardless, uh, like, you know, things related to the military industrial complex, the, the 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 Pentagon budget, things like that. Like, I think Sanders would still be signing off on that. I think that would be too high a thing for him to try to take on. But I think simultaneously, yeah, the things that he could have done through uh, executive order, like you just said, uh, for giving student loan or at least for giving an amount, right? Like uh, it wasn't 10000 one being thrown around during the election, you know, which seems like an impossibility now. But the the one related to uh, pardoning all nonviolent drug offenders, that would have incredible ripple effects and, and yeah. be something that would be so substantial, especially to marginalized communities. And it is something that is shown to be popular. Like, I think that's like sometimes the left, and I mean this globally, has to pick battles that are going to be popular uh, for everybody that are winnable. And one of them is ending the drug war. Like, it's something that most people have kind of come to their own understanding, unless they're like, you know, very Puritan Christian, that this will have a net benefit to society, that we need to stop criminalizing people's personal behavior and consumption because it's leading to the worst possible outcomes. We have more dangerous drugs on the streets than ever before. It directly uh, helps benefit, uh, you know, crime families, crime bosses is all that kind of stuff. So this is something that I think a lot of people could get behind. Yeah, that and there are 2,700 people currently incarcerated in federal facilities that would actually be set free and their whole families and lives would be changed directly if Joe Biden were to, um, you know, release them. And, And that's just federal. Obviously, he can't do that for states. But 2,700 people is a lot. That's a lot of people whose lives have been ruined that are incarcerated for nonviolent drug offenses. So, um, yeah, I think that's massive. And he just sits there and does nothing. Like, this is why it's hard when he says something like, oh, it's Joe Manchin's fault. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, kind of we all need to do what we can with what we have. And that's what we think. Like, that's what I think about Bernie. He wouldn't have necessarily had any more success with um, legislation. But I do think that the first hundred days of a Sanders presidency would have seen a lot of these executive orders that would have directly changed people's lives. That I think. And, And, you know, yet here we sit with nothing. Thanks for watching. If you want to support our mission to transform politics into service, please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media, and consider joining our Patreon, where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.